have to sort of. We can put it in the middle here and then. Well, I mean, for all of us, we're only. Oh, oh that's that's cool. Cool. hold on. Hold on. I got you. I got you. Okay. No, I yeah, bet I mean, you guys wish you were using a digital die roller right like some cool kid. Don't pose. I was uh, but I like pose. posing. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, poser. Okay. I am a poser. I am going to yeah, literally drop it. the last of my comic one energy on you guys. When I leave this, I'll be leaving in a fucking body bag. So let's have some fun as we go. Huh? Who brought the body bag? All right. Hi. I'm Jackson Lansing. Welcome to Vest. This is season X. <laughs> Episode X. <laughs> the epilogue. But not the end. Starring Colin Kelly, as this might be a good idea. Jody Hauser, as Takaba Lim. Sam Delev, as Mirza Dolchette. Max Isaacson, as Queen, Visionary, Destroyer. And introducing Jeannie Benson, as this might be, or this is, your last chance. We begin three months after the events at Huskworld, now known as the Concern. Captain Lucy Bart has taken a leadership position in the Peacekeep, operating as the coordinating official of the Brightest Eye and Peacekeep relations. Luvin Yichal Moore has retired from Peacekeep service, and along with her paramour, Cryo, has been traveling the galaxy, exploring further Huskworlds in hopes of perhaps one day discovering the long-lost Q-Ray homeworld. Rake Yichol Moore and Gaspar Ueno remain at large. Noble Defender has taken up residence on Terra in an effort to better understand his heritage, but he's still going by his Brightest Eye name. And on the border of Brightest Eye Siren Space, massive trenches of starships have assembled in what is clearly a countdown to war. We begin in the underbelly of one such trench, extending far uh, across the stars, literally between star systems. A countless amount of metal and guns and weaponry pointed across the way. But we swoop underneath into the shadows below the sensor grid where none can see, where small civilian vessels have set up what are essentially small pockets of scum and villainy, places for people to trade uh, goods, move uh, assets across these trenches, uh, and in the countdown to war, make as much money as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. Many of these vessels are searing in nature, but one has been heavily modified. There are pieces of Peacekeep technology grafted on the sides of it, pieces of brightest eye chitin. And it is uh, sitting underneath this trench, facing down against a bit of a larger vessel, sleek and purple, on which is spray painted three words, pirates don't bargain. But in the small air pocket between these two vessels, that is exactly what these three are doing. Cordo Cordero is a low gravity born Siren pirate He's about 10 feet tall, thin, and uh, even in this non-atmosphere, this fake atmosphere, he seems to almost sway like a tree in the breeze. He has uh, a sort of laced golden uh, net that he wears as clothing because his body can't support much more in terms of weight. He has beautiful features and a uh, a smiling kind of roguish demeanor. He has arrived to bargain with two of the most infamous smugglers on this part of the Siren Trench. This might be a good idea, and to call the limb. What's your ship called? The Loudest Voice. The Loudest Voice. Uh, and more importantly, what have you arrived to sell this guy? What have we arrived to sell this guy? What did you talk people out of owning? <laughs> well, <laughs> what we have for him, first and foremost, is information. Information. We 
know quite a lot. And uh, a pirate is always on the move. Really what you know and what you don't know is the difference between life and death out here. So... An information exchange. An information exchange. Okay. Uh, not not weapons. I'm not giving any up. Can I ask information on the bright sky? Information on the peace keep? Information on the concern? Information on what? It is a full menu. And everything's for sale. Oh, shit. Okay. So he arrives uh, and walks down from his ship. Mm. He towers above both of you and looks down. I have to say, I thought you'd be shorter. <laughs> we like to give a certain uh, presence of mind. I'm glad you think of us as short. That just means we're compact, quick and nimble. I thought that you might be wearing something a little more understated. Speaking of which, what are you wearing? Because it's vast and we really have to get into the nitty gritty of your fashion. Clearly, yeah. Uh, Takaz, I think basically she's probably, thanks to her, you know, traveling companion, sort of spiced up, you know, the uh, encounter suit she was always wearing. Right on. She probably has some belt added on. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've zhuzhed it up a little bit. It's tasteful, though. Okay. But I definitely, you know, rolled some of those fashion design high checks to, like, really couture this thing out. Also, I think, like, a hint of a cape, like, nothing that's gonna, like, get I'm... entangled up in if she's, like, flipping crazy or anything. We are wearing... It's kinda cool. We are wearing matching half capes. Matching yes. half capes! Our, our, uh, the, the Lattice <laughs> Voice has a cape closet, yeah. as all good ships do. Yeah, yeah, we coordinate. So the, the black, it's a black half cape, but the inside, iridescent. And, and my And my AI gun arm is just polished to a perfect sheen. Okay. So, as you step up, uh, and he, he, he talk about his clothing, he looks down to you and says, How much for the cape? As we've said, all things are on the table. It's really more a matter of what else. If you need some fashion advice, we'd be more than happy to parlay. He, Clearly, you could use some help. He is very good at it. This net costs me a small planet's worth of Siren capital. You couldn't afford couture like this if you tried. Spending money on something doesn't make it good, necessarily. Let's hope that's not true of the information you brought me. Unless you're planning to wear it. Nice. <laughs> what I'm planning and he puts this big, he sort of uh, uh, brings up his hover crate. <laughs> it's been mm -hmm. guarding behind him and he sort of swipes with one arm and it moves around using sort of a rudimentary AI and then settles between the two of you. Just walk away with more information than any other pirate in the Siren territories. This entire place will be on fire within the year. And I don't intend to burn with it. In this crate, the capital that we agreed on, mm. as well as a gesture of goodwill, as I understand those you have been employed with are not fond of the, some of the practices of my people. And he reaches down and with a single long finger, he presses a button in the center of the crate. And the crate unlocks until the top of the crate is no longer there. It folds in onto itself, revealing a pile of uh, literal physical uh, Siren Capital. Because yeah. Siren Capital is like Latinum in the Star Trek universe, essentially a, a, a rare substance that cannot be made uh, artificial. Yeah, that's that good stuff. It is that good gold standard. Nice. Uh, and here it is basically built into a massive pile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's all you see inside so far. Whatever that other thing is, you're not sure. Okay, that's fine. I, I take it what else you were talking about is not in the crate? I believe you'll find everything up to your satisfaction. I'm gonna 
do a listen. All right, listen, Jack. First Let's roll go. of Bast in like over a year. Let's okay. see how many uh, ones I get. Uh, all right, so your listen check is. Uh, are you doing a uh, perception listen? Perception listen. Yeah, yeah. eighteen. Are you doing it against him or against the crate? Uh, I was doing a more general one to see, like, if, is there anyone else in the area? Is there something we're missing? Got it. You're yes. looking at, you're looking yeah. at the environment? Got yeah. it. No problem. Mm -hmm. No, that's actually pretty good. Oh, I missed counting giant piles of dice. Yeah. Just keeping piles. Eight, nine. I think I flipped something. Oh, oh. I think it's okay. Yeah. Nine. 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 <laughs> you, uh, your listening valves open. Yep. <laughs> Good idea. Just kind of <laughs> skirts away. I think slightly. he'd be used to it by now. You'd That's think weird. so. Every time it's weird. This you is a kid who literally physically adapts all the time to talk to people. Yeah, but I do. That's Other... weird. Yeah, well, uh, so, yeah. Pops open and uh, takes in the vibrational frequencies of the entire surrounding area. Um, it is a pretty loud place because this thing is actually a starship, right? It's yeah. not a matter of like, oh, you're like on a calm planet. This thing is vibrating with the vibrational frequencies of hundreds of other starships mm -hmm. that are all running up and down this track. Um, these things are actually grafted together at this point just to keep them essentially from like space drift. Yeah. So as, they, uh, as they've like maintained, it means that everything's kind of moving, but two things you get. One, his ship uh, is not empty. There are other there are other pirates on that ship, and they are all essentially um, around the entrance area right now. Yep. The other thing you get is that there is something living in the crate. Uh, uh, anything more specific than living, uh, like animal, vegetable? Uh, Inter animal. Uh, and it is, uh, it is basically like the only way that you can tell is that there is a slight vibration in the gold, uh, or in the, uh, the searing capital, uh, there. Just kind of... Is, is the amount of capital in this crate a lot? Have we negotiated? I mean, is this like a big haul? Yes, this is a big haul. This you is wouldn't it. be selling that amount of information, especially on your old friends, for small amounts of money. Excellent. That's what I wanted to know. Uh, in that case, you are racing a ticking clock. Doom is coming. Fire, death. The brightest eye, the peace keep, the siren caught in the metal, are going to rip themselves apart in a conflagration that will burn this half of the cosmos. We want this crate, and much like yourself, we want to be gone. The cosmos can take care of itself, but the reason that we are here is because we are wise beings who know that the only one who can take care of number one is number one. So, let's talk. What are you most afraid of? And how can we alleviate that fear? What I am afraid of is being taken advantage of by Tom. Is that why you brought your extra friends with you? He cuts you a glance. He didn't think that you knew they were there. And you can see him get a little, like, his countenance darkens just a bit. It's unwise for a pirate to enter a negotiation without his crew. Surely yours are waiting in your ship as well. You think we need a crew to handle a pack like you? <laughs> this is Taka, the limb. I just started glancing at him like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> One of the most deadly, vicious fighters in all the cosmos. If you think I need anything more to protect me from you, and if you think I'm the most dangerous thing on this ship, you are sadly mistaken. I need a uh, I need an intimidation check from you. Oh, always my best role. Can I can I give him a boost? If, yes. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything with the arm yet, but just kind of like you know adjust it a little. Like, what's your intimidation to come? Uh, Three. What's your intimidation? Good idea. Two. Uh, 
Wait, your intimidation is a two? No. <laughs> Pop, uh, so your intimidation <laughs> check is... Because I have a... I... Wow, if you've never, you've never run an intimidation check. Huh. That's amazing. I don't, That's I'm not, I don't scare him. But he's, he's also treading on my reputation and I had the same trait. Mm, so it seemed like that would, that would help too. Hold up. So it's 17 minus 12. So 15, 16, 17. Roll 17. So it actually ends up being a pretty good roll. It's basically up to your negotiation check. But only because Taka's like really well known for being, you know, a blasty. Mm -hmm. I spy. So many sixes. Try. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. I think it's a six. I think it was six. Yeah. Six. On an intimidation? Yeah. All right. Six, seven, eight, nine. Ha. Okay. So he he just he goes. Uh, yes. Your reputations precede you. And this aggressive negotiation is exactly why we are here. And he like reaches out his hands and from behind him, just the door of his ship reopens and out of it come like literally like hurt, 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 like a whole cool, group cool. of a whole group Suntarans, of, eight, <laughs> yes, of eight high gravity series. These guys are shorter, they're dense, they are very Centauran in their sort of physical uh, uh, builds, essentially. Um, they uh, are dressed in tactical gear. They all have uh, what look like uh, some kind of like high-tech Siren uh, mm -hmm. uh, gun, but you don't, you've never seen a gun make like this before. So they're kind of rolling out, hurt, 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 and they all back up behind him, make a little V behind him, and just hurt, and stand, and he, he smiles. The best money can buy. Lord, now, the point, if you wanted to get into an argument about who has the larger reproductive organs, well, I can stop you right now. I have none. <laughs> it is true. What? On this data stick, I have every piece of information known of the state of the universe regarding the brightest eye, the peacekeeper, the key players, the key fulcrums. You will find intelligence dossiers. You will find personality deconstructions. Everything you need to know about the key players currently about to set this cosmos on fire. And if you don't wish to burn, it's helpful to know which direction to run. This is what we offer you. And you offer us this. Our apologies for mocking your Beautiful Lemay. All we seek is the opportunity to take this treasure and perhaps buy a small moon of our own. How is that for an aggressive negotiation? Negotiation check. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna give uh, give you three extra die on this one uh, for the like very well stated case and to cause a little threat there. That was more of a uh, fact. In yeah, her, yeah, yeah in I know, opinion, but like, but... <laughs> coming off of a, a limb with a bunch of guns, a fact can be a threat. Uh, was that like 23, I think? Uh, I like that you're guessing. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to remember my old... No, 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 I got you, man. It's 57 um, dice. Between all of us, I think we have enough dice to cover you, man. Yeah. <laughs> are, are we sure? This is, this is a... Good ideas um, negotiation check. I've got, I've, got you at, I've got you at 17 on this. And then I'm going to... Plus you five. So you need two more. I might have just said I plus you three and then I'm at plus two five because I'm the nice guy. Go ahead. Yes, Jackson Lansing, the nicest of guys. The, the nicest of guys. Okay, let's try this better I'm not, this time. I'm not mean. One, two, ten, eleven. Did you get that one? Yes. Okay. Eleven. Consider oh. negotiated. <laughs> This is sort of a long, very slow smile that cuts across his face. Oh, we having a smile off? Oh yeah, <laughs> smile off. Dear. Uh, and then he, and then he just goes, and they all back into the ship, 
He reaches down with his hand. High five. <laughs> Pass over the data. I've, Actually, I've already put a hand on the the, the gun arm hand on the crate. On the crate? Yeah. Okay. Wait, so as I actually start to reach out, I, I cut my eyes to you. And it's like a, it's like a, yes, are we doing this? <laughs> she shrugs with four shoulders. Great. <laughs> a, a shrug is as good as a yes. Hand it over. Okay. He takes the information. A delight doing business with you. We'll see you at the end of the world. And he turns around and heads back <laughs> in. <laughs> Choice. Yeah. Um, Very nice. Uh, and I'm already pushing the crate. The, you said it's a harbor crate. Yep. I figure it, it should be pretty easy, especially with the... No, no, no. It's, it essentially moves with you. Now okay. you, you've been essentially imprinted as the, as the crate's owner now. So mm-hmm. as he walks away, it switches ownership to you. And wherever you go, this thing's going to follow you. We need to get this back to our ship right away. Of course. There's something there's alive in here. There's, some, there's something alive in my money? <laughs> our money. Our money? <laughs> yes. Uh... Is it possible that it's going to explode outwards and rip our guts out? I'll make sure we're ready for that. I'll take it. So we take the crate back to our And ship. even though he can't see, I floof my cape. Dramatically. I hate that guy. Uh, this ship closes up, and uh, as, you, as it lifts off, uh, you can see the, you know, the side of the ship that says Pilot, Pirates Don't Bargain. And he it pots up, he turns around, and it says, Businessmen do. And he burns Aww. away uh, from the trench, off into the darkness, uh, leaving your uh, vessel uh, alone. They, okay. ha- they had nice guns, though. They did have nice guns. I, I wish we could have gotten one. I wouldn't have minded getting some of those guns, but we can buy lots of guns now. Yes. Or capes, or jackets, or freedom. Finally, this is the kind of money that we need to, to, to do whatever we want. Do we know what that is yet? Do you guys step step to the door of your ship? Do we know what that is yet? Yeah. T B D. <laughs> now we can start to find out. All right. And as you step onto the vessel and the door closes behind you, um, describe to me what the inside of uh, the loudest voice looks like. I, I've, I've, I've let the tongue do most of the decorating. The tongue did the decorating. Yep. Okay. Um, it's pretty ugly, actually. <laughs> it's like really eclectic. It's like too much space and not enough people editing good idea in any way. And it's just like good idea. Or like Takao being like, Meh. it's like, dude, is this good? Like, I, ha- I have a tree room. That's all, yeah, yeah. all I care about. Nice. Let's be honest. Yeah. It's like awesome. I, I painted a lot of trees on the walls. I've done a lot of like, uh, like used fabric to create kind of cool, but it's like, it's, it's kind of ugly. Like talking to people, great. Art, not, not really my thing. She, right. she, she doesn't know better, so she just right. assumes it's good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, get in the vessel, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, there's going to be security sweeps coming through the side of the trench in a little bit. So you should probably not stick around. Yeah, there. but, but we want to get the crate to a secure room. There you go. Okay. Yeah. You move the crate over into. You basically have like a cargo storage area. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Got you know a big motherfucker rubble lock on it. Yep. Uh, We've cleared everything out. Cleared yeah, everything else of value. Wait, well, the crate I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn to my arm. Arm? Yes, how can I help? There is possibly something in that box over there that wishes to kill us. Hopefully not, but we should be ready. Ooh, disgusting. Can I kill it? We will see if it is a threat first. Delightful. So gun mode. Okay, and the guns, they the arm switches to gun mode. I'm gonna bang on the box. Okay, so you bang, bang, whoosh, and as you like, on, literally on the third bang, uh, like the the capital all just sort of flies up in the thing, and uh, uh, and actually several um, things come out of the box, uh, all about two and a half feet tall, spread wings. It's a bunch of sweet relief. <sighs> What? Gun arm, do not, do not shoot. What? Do not they're all shoot. Around, they're, and they're all literally just like screeching as they fly around the locked room. Bad free, people. Free. Well, just like going around. Well, welcome to our ship. Hey, we're free. Hey, did you see we're free? Oh my God, we're free. Wah! They're just like running around. They're super she, she gets the arm back into normal arm 
Yeah. Shall I shoot? Can I shoot? There's no, no, that's, shoot. You, that's why. No, yeah. no shooting. No shooting. No shooting for now. I, in in sweet now. relief language, it's like yeah. calm, 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 calm down, calm down. <laughs> that's only in the translator. Okay, Takah okay. Taka is actually Taka. smiling a bit and holding out arms if any of them want to land. Oh, um, I'm gonna. I want to make you do a <laughs> xenozoology check for that. Um, but it's gonna, I'm gonna roll it on empathy. I'm just gonna pop your empathy off and replace it with your Xeno Zoo. Okay. So that is a 10. I think you're fine. Uh, she is the tree now. Two, <laughs> three. Three? <laughs> yes. That, that's a minor success. So one lands, like they're all gonna run, and one lands on your, uh, on your arm and sort of, uh, you can tell it's a little big, Compared to Merza, uh, these sweet relief are uh, a little bit more animalistic. Like they're they they aren't uh, they aren't terribly social. So when it lands, it like sniffs your arm. Like are you a thing? And it kind of moves up your arm and it kind of moves up to your shoulder and then it, like looks at you right in the eye. And she smiles and says, "Don't worry, you're not a vassal here." And it's it, it goes, and it whoosh, back up. Do they have uh, influence? Uh, it had these have, I guess these are right now would not have language implants. So maybe you only understand the screeches because you are a polyglot. Yeah. You probably don't understand the screeches, um, but you can understand the intent behind the screeches. But no, they, they do not. They have look very happy. Yes. Why? Why would he think that we wanted sweet relief? He might not have known they were there. They might have been hiding to escape. He offered. Oh. Uh, click click whistle. Uh, click click whistle. Uh, do they, were they hiding or were they, were they, were they put here or did they sneak in? Put here! Put here. Great. Do you know, uh, do they know why? Do they know why? Uh. We worked at the bank! The bank got shot! Everybody shot! Now we're free! Got it. <laughs> Offloading more illegal cargo. Perhaps. Uh, okay. Okay. We oh. have we have space. We have space. And uh, and we are free vassal ourselves, so we should give them shelter. Of course. No. This is a ship of freedom. This is the entire point. We will give them a home for as long as they need. A ship of freedom and loudness. The most loud. Um so yeah, we'll set them up in the Floor? I don't know, but I don't know. Yeah. We're like, now I'm gonna like mix up the, I don't know if they want food. Like, what do you take care of these things? Like, I don't fucking like it. It's like, I'm definitely like a person with dogs, and it's like, I do not like dogs. Cue like, a montage of the, of your, of the vessel <laughs> heading off of the trench, and as it does, it's just like, it's, it's like a, like a cheery song as good idea, like, tries different foods for the, yeah, like, the, I don't know. Like, like, it's like, meat? No. no. Veggies? No. Like, and they keep being like spike, and I'm like, no spike, no spike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they keep like, like pop out of the spikes. No, 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 no. Uh, you know, what, like you wake up and one of them's like under your pillow. Like it's just, it's a whole bunch of like, it's it's a bad roommate situation. This is already the most adorable episode of Mask ever. We engine up and gets good. And as, but but at the end of that thing, you're sort of coming out exhausted. You finally gotten them all to like sleep. You've gotten them all fed. You figured out that most of them have like names and you're starting to differentiate who they are. Um, and you've counted that there are in fact 10 of them. What? Yeah, this was a, uh, this, it, it seems like it was the entire sweet relief compliment of a Siren bank uh, that was straight up heisted by Cordo. Right. Um, and it would appear that Cordo basically just like took an extreme amount of money from them and also all of their vassals brought them to you and, uh, and thought like, you know, you would feel yeah. real good about that. Yeah, great, awesome, love yeah. it, awesome, yeah. fantastic. We'll, we'll be, um, we'll, and we'll Taka is in the cockpit, kind of sitting there. So it's, it's like uh, it's like um, it's like the the Falcon or Serenity. Like there's a couple of chairs that are sort of sitting next to each other, yeah. looking out uh, through the view screen as you guys pass down the trench. You're essentially like just running down the bottom side of this trench because mm -hmm. there's no way to either side of it. You cross that to one side of it, you'll get shot. Right. You cross to the other side of the brightest eye trench, you'll get shot. You actually have to outrun the trench just to get around it. Uh, so, uh, a question going back to the that first role when I did the perception listen, was there anything else weird about the the uh, credits? No, at all. Okay. No. I'm still no, the Zirin capital is capital, totally yeah. 
100% Siren Capital. It's just deeply stolen. But yeah, the Sirens aren't going to mind. Yeah, that's <laughs> they don't care. Is, is this, is, this money cannot be traced, can it? I can't see how. Um, we could shoot a bank, but we didn't, so I would rather not be held responsible. Uh, the, we are legitimate business dealers, a legitimate business deal that we have done legitimately. Yes. What is crime, if not business, from another perspective? That is a sound argument. Um, and as you're, uh, as you're sort of sitting there, looking out at space, uh, there is suddenly a ramp, 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 ramp on your console. Ramp, ramp, ramp. It is the, uh, it is your proximity alarm. Ramp, 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 ramp. Uh, uh, my danger, evasive maneuvers, shields up. How do you do this? You, you tell me, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, perception, listen, for me. Okay. That's my version of uh, sensors. Go ahead and roll it. Uh, what was it again? Uh, your perception, listen, is 18, I believe. That sounds kind Yes, of great. 18. <laughs> I almost feel bad making you roll for this, but we'll see how it goes. Four, five. Or, wait, is that right? <laughs> just, it's a classic. I don't know how to crash. count. Just turn them off. Yeah, that's three. Amazing. Um, you, <laughs> classic Takah. Classic Takah. You open, uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's hard from inside the vessel in the first place, but moreover, when these things open, um, uh, I'm going to just put a thing in here. And I'm just going to do a good idea thing because I think it's funny. They open and good idea literally just like pops his hands over them and points oh. out the vessel. Look. Uh, hold on. You don't need to listen when you can see with your eyes. It is It is instinct. 70 brightest eye vessels. Oh, shit. Pop out of crossing speed. Just above you. As if to intercept you directly. They are right in front of you. They are facing you down. They uh, blot out the blackness of space in nearly every direction. At the head of these ships, a ship you've never seen before, made uh, not just from the uh, the chitin of uh, the Brightest Eye homeworld, but laced with gold, uh, laced with uh, Perhaps not even just gold, but uh, melted down Siren cap. It laces all around the ship. Uh, this thing is about three times the size of a normal Brightest Eye vessel. Uh, and at the head of it is a mast, like in an old sea ship, uh, which unveils the furling, uh, or the unfurling uh, carapace and, uh, mag and majestic visage of visionary destroyer. She's got herself a gold boat? <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to talk to her decorator. They appear better than you. Um, uh, oh, sorry, uh, that, that, I should not have said that. that, that uh, is... You do you do this for just a minute. I'm not shooting. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Uh, Bye. I'm uh, taking I... the capital and we're, we're putting it in our secret smuggler spot. Okay, got it. I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, pay it comms, whatever. Hello. Uh, and uh, on your uh, and on your comm link comes a voice. You uh, comes a voice you recognize. Taka. Queen. Good to hear your voice again. How are you doing? I've been better. You can hear a certain amount of like strain in the voice, as if the vocal cords have been damaged. Where's good idea? On the ship. I need to talk to both of you. Oh, oh! <laughs> um, are you dressed differently or are you just get your oh, Yes. No, same dress the oh, same. Okay, good. I, I thought maybe you went for a costume change. I was like, did you leave? Oh, wait. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. Uh, queen! Amazing to see you running into you out here. Are we, are we just hearing? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now you're just hearing. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're, you're literally looking up at the thing, um, but the, the ship is literally coming in as if it's going to just dock with you. Oh, okay, in that case, yeah, I'm saying nothing. I'm just like... Okay. The queen it. wishes to speak with us. I'm sure you can tell this is not a coincidence that I've found you here. I would be intrigued to know how. We're on the brink of war. 
we've noticed. <laughs> a war I intend to win. But Lucy and the Peacekeep have other ideas, and I'm willing to entertain them for a moment. I need your help. Two captains I have served under. Uh, 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 our, our humble ship is always here to service such an august and storied legend. Oh my god. Can you ever speak plainly, ma'am? I've missed you. <laughs> is Merza with you? Always. We have found some sweet relief who could possibly use some help. They recently achieved freedom and could probably use a guide. Of course. We'll be docking with you. You can bring them aboard. <laughs> the right. ship docks immediately, pulling the vessel into landing clamps and sidling it on the other side of the vessel. Right. Huey, Dewey, Louie, come on, let's get cleaned up. <laughs> We're gonna go meet some friends. <laughs> Yeah, sort of swirling around. Right, good, good. Yes. Tell them we have another sweet relief friend for them who is also free. Uh, yeah. They'll be like... Communicate all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely have a have a new friend for you guys to meet. Uh, mostly it's just like, thank God, like, get them out of our house. But... <laughs> okay, yeah. so swirls around, swirls around. Uh, the docking bay uh, opens up again. You know, it's that same door. Now, just when it opens up, it opens into an atmosphere. Um, the uh, inside of this vessel is uh, as ornate as the outside of it. Uh, this is the royal barge. This is this this is like personal yacht. Uh, barge. A good chunk of this thing, though it is enormously large, a good chunk of it, quite like the room we're in right now, is like vast ha -ha, ah, in scale ah. and scope. I'm sorry, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna troll on shield. It's massive, massive. Uh, it's in it's scale massive. and scope, uh, extending out, uh, you know, very, very far uh, to the sides, but mostly from top to bottom, uh, you know, from, 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 uh, uh, stern, front to, stern back. to front to back. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. I know ships. Um, so you go, you're heading oh, down at the shot. very, very end of the, at the very end of this uh, long, long ship is a throne. Um, on that throne sits the impossibly tall uh, and large uh, figure of Visionary Destroyer. But Viz does not look quite like you saw her last. Oh. Due to injuries sustained in Husk World, uh, Viz now uh, has a bit of a changed visage. I'm going to have Max tell you all about that. So obviously still enormous, but after the nanobots dug through all the chitin and started ripping into my body, uh, there was very little to do to put me back together. Um, especially since the past three months have been dedicated to war and building up our armies and going up against the Siren, I haven't spent any time really recovering. Uh, Merza has done what they can, but huge chunks of my body are dug out and covered in scar tissue. Many limbs have been ripped off. There's almost no carapace left. It's just soft, scarred flesh with huge divots missing. Giant pieces of my face are torn out. Where concordance would usually run is showing all over the nervous system in there. It's all teched out and it's just kind of horrifying. Uh, are you the only two in this cabinet? No. Okay. So, uh, Merza is. Where's Merza in relation? So, Mares is sort of a top viz on the throne, uh, beneath them standing at the, uh, uh, standing at the, the base of this, uh, of this stairwell are two figures, a mind and a tongue. The mind, uh, is, it's funny, it's like, it's hard to tell them visually apart, but I'm gonna say, you know this mind. It has a sash and a sort of, a series of sort of gold-plated bits around its base. And a fancy hat. A fancy hat. Yay. Oh, amazing. Uh, it's, uh, it's Night Armor, uh, oh, now nice. Admiral of, uh, this, uh, of this space. The tongue, however, you do not know. Uh, they look young, uh, much younger than you. Um, as do we all. Yeah, uh, like as a do we all. Yeah, 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 yeah fair, uh, fair, fair point. Uh, freshly, freshly, looks... freshly grown. And uh, do you want to tell us anything else about um, this is your last chance? So, last chance stands at Vis Visionary Destroyer's feet. Uh, they are wearing a 
purple bodysuit with uh, gray um, stylings all over and um, maybe like um, sort of like an arm capelet that goes down one side. Um, but rather, it's not super ornate. It's, it's mostly just solids with like some color, gray color blocking. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like a deep violet. And oh. they, their eyes are kind of widely watching everything that's happening. And if, if a tongue could smile, this tongue would be smiling. Oh, tongues can smile. This yeah. tongue is smiling super hardcore. Oh, amazing. Okay, great. Um, and Nidar uh, sort of floats up, uh, up to you. Mm. Greetings, greetings, greetings. And he, his little omelets sort of come around and they give, uh, they go straight for you. Taka is smiling, even though she doesn't do that all that much. And she does, she hugs the jar, which is awkward, but she has a lot of arms, so she makes it work. Good idea, is gonna kiss the top of his jar. He, he, his, uh, he has one little, like, hand that just sort of walks up and just sort of, like, like, pops your head a little bit. Yeah, oh, and, like, like playfully. Oh, yeah. okay, great. I was like, oh, what'd I do? No, no, okay, no, no great, good. yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, Night are uh, kind of floats back. It is so good to see you, but the time is late, and we have very little of it. Shall we explain the situation? Please do. Uh, and Nidar... She, she uh, keeps the, also shooting sort of worried glances at Viz, because she did not expect her to look like this. Yeah. Uh, Nidar flips a, um, a sort of metal arm to you. Last chance. If you wouldn't mind, and uh, you just have a little, you have a little like button in your hand that controls the projection system. You're essentially the assistant for Nidar here. Aww. Of course. And they click the button, and uh, the whole display, you know, kind of comes to life. And they sort of like are nervously. They keep attempting to make eye contact with good idea, and like then nervously sort of look away, and then look again, and then the you see their shoulders sort of shudder a little bit, you know, like they're sticking close to Nida, but they're also, they look very deeply much like they want to like say something, but they're like, not my place, not my time, kind of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have one opportunity to prevent all out war with the Siri. A grand show of force, a statement of intent, but the peacekeep has intervened. Lucy Bard has arranged a mission of peace. And this rogue planet, and he points at this uh, planet that's literally moving through the darkness. It's a planet that is unattached to any kind of star system and is just moving sort of along the trench line. Because the trench line obviously is, you know, yeah, yeah. incredibly large. So large that a rogue planet might be able to pass through it. And this rogue planet, identified by peacekeep scientists, the Siren are sending a new leadership delegation to treat with our queen. However, we cannot do this publicly. The brightest eye must not see that we have taken steps towards peace, as war has been the concordance footing for nearly three months. To continue to operate at peak efficiency, this must be done in secret, and peace must only be declared when peace has been accomplished. So, so we need to go to this planet, is what you're saying, and you would like someone who is considered more of a neutral party to be alongside you. I need to go to this planet in a ship nobody recognizes. The minute that Viz speaks, the whole room seems to get quiet, even though there's not many of you left. If you want to travel in a ship that no one can recognize, I suggest not having your face plastered on the front. I think I intend to go in this. Well, clearly not. It is quite majestic, though. Uh, I can't say the same for yourself. Majesty is not in a look, little one. Majesty has taken in actions. I lead my people. You must take care of yourself as well. That's why I'm here. They're really good at it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine. So, Takai holds up her artificial arm. They, there are things that can be done to help. In time, which I don't have. No, you're going full speed towards Armageddon. Not if I can get your help. 
Not if Lucy Bard has her way. Of course, Lucy Bard is fighting for peace. You don't sound entirely convinced. I fight for freedom. Freedom from who? Oh, not for me. For us. From the serum. But yet you are willing to consider peace if it is possible. If the sweet relief are freed, I don't need to wipe them off the face of the galaxy. It would be a bonus. Seems, compared to your furious cosmic might, it seems relinquishing one small section of their capital flow is highly doable. Have you made this offer to them yourself? That's what we're going to meet them to do. Have they asked, have they set their price? Sirens always have a price. Not yet. Hmm. There's a reason I came to the best negotiator in the galaxy. You just see Last Chance sort of shrink into themselves a little bit. <laughs> I have even learned to help some. I have no doubt. We are quite the duo and quite the team. If you want our help, we come at a cost. Tika actually does not look comfortable with that statement, but doesn't say anything just yet. Okay. Yeah. But does... Right, right. Shoot. Okay. Look registered. Got it. You'll be paid. And we don't want to be murdered. He won't be murdered. Where are they? Secretly. Oh, they did they bring them? Did they, I thought they yeah, came yeah, they, yeah. They, yeah, you can gesture, and yeah, they yeah. and this swarm of sweet relief sweep out of the ship and fly around the uh, the interior of the vessel in uh, sort of concentric circles, as if they would uh, in the plains of grass. They came from a bank. Oh. Do you fly up with them? Oh. You fly up. Uh, with them, uh, just to give me a sense of how majestic it is, can you give me a uh, athletics check, please? Athletics plus glide, yeah. Athletic athletics plus glide, yes. So that's I twelve that's athletics, two. and your glide is three. Yes. Sam I'll is the I'll only one who's me like also with me. memorized all the macros. Not on I, I know. The moment. I want to perception listen at this because I'm actually really mm. worried about her right now. Sure. Um, that is fine. Do it. Eighteen. Yeah. Uh, Yo, Viz, can you roll me a composure check? Or ten. Not majestic. Two. Cool. It's been, it's been a long time since you've done this, so you actually, as you you head up, and it's really exciting, and then you almost get like glanced by one of them as they as they keep going, and you you realize like, okay, right, right, this is a. It's almost like you've lost touch with that part of being a sweet relief. It's been so long, mm -hmm. but slowly you're kind of finding your way back. And uh, there's there's a, a certain amount of peace that comes to you just from being able to be once again with your people and in the sky. What do you got? Five. What do you got? Three. Okay. Um, you can sense in Viz's uh, mind a deep-seated uh, sort of sadness uh, and rage at the circumstances of this war, uh, not that she has to pursue it, you can tell she really wants to pursue it, but that she's being held back from pursuing it um, by this uh, sort of effort of peace. Uh, but you can tell that she is determined to make good to her promise to Lucy Bard. After all, after everything that they've been through together, uh, it is important that, uh, and especially given that the war is about to happen, uh, it is very important that the brightest eye and the peacekeep don't have a fracture in the relation. So this has been put in a real tight spot, and you can tell that between fighting physically every day to remain uh, herself, uh, at the same time, having this sort of mental tear on her is, is extreme. Uh, Taka wants to go right up. If, uh... So you walk up the stairs? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Taka walks right past you. Wait, um... Up towards the stairs. <laughs> Wait, up. excuse me, um... I, 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 I sort of uh, nod to them, but I don't... I don't stop. Okay. You just keep okay. going up the stairs. <laughs> um, Great. Until, you, uh, until you're right in front of Viz. Who, in the absence of Merza, seems to be sagging a little more. Just sort of hold out my hand. We will help free them. Good. I hope you two can... Do one last act of kindness before you 
run off into the galaxy and do what you will. I appreciate the help. Helping is... Nope, can't even say it. Not in your nature? Nope, not in the <laughs> least. But... War is not the answer of this cosmos. If it is preventable... There has been enough destruction. I don't know. Sometimes I think a clean slate wouldn't be so bad. Ooh, didn't like that. Don't like that. Takaz glaring. But not saying. Uh, <laughs> actually, you know what? Composure check. Hey. <laughs> for, for both of us? No, good idea. Good idea. Oh, yeah. Uh, you have a <laughs> 11 composure check, please. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Jesus. nine. Jesus. Good dice. Good dice. I don't get to do any of my evil shit. All right. <laughs> this is a happy, fun game. What are you talking about? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, um, I, yeah, that takes you just a second, and it's almost like a, there's like a flash in your mind, like mm -hmm. really, really fast. Mm -hmm. A face that you recognize. Mm -hmm. And then you're back. You're fine. Just, you're good. I, I. You don't pick this up. Okay. Um, I, I, you you know you know that good idea has been troubled since the concern. Oh, I know. I I heard cause of cool. Yeah. In his head. Yeah. So, yeah. You, you you know. I've been trying to keep an eye on that yeah. stuff. Um. All right. So with that said, that's that's, that's us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you uh you head out. Uh, are you gonna you're gonna head out to the ship? You're gonna. Try to go to the planet. I assume you, yeah, yeah we have about forty five minutes left. So yeah, you want to go to the planet? Yeah. You want our ship? Come. Name and, your uh, price. It'll be paid. I tell this sweet relief about the eight hundred that we have and the fleet relief, and that we are sending them along. Fleet relief. I have fifty ships. They are Syrian ships. We've do been doing intelligence on those ships because we liberated them. They liberated themselves through blood and that they are going to join and be free, as we free others. Awesome. Uh, and as we're exiting, uh, I extend my arm. And Last Chance kind of like very, very timid, timidly and tentatively like wraps their arm around yours. Mm -hmm. And in like private tongue language, like our original Kretsch language, I'm like, have you ever, you're gonna love our ship. Have you ever seen art before? Visionary Destroyer makes them sometimes. Visionary Destroyer leaves carapace blood and gore on walls and calls it philosophy. Well, you haven't seen any of her latest work. It's really quite profound. Well, that is something I would like to see. I'm sticking close with Viz and Merga. And, uh, and Viz, do you walk? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, it's We've kind of like a <laughs> shambling, broken gait, you know, right. since so many limbs are missing, it's right. kind it's of really your good. fall, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's like, it's like a, a fluff of pump. Yeah. yeah. Tika offers the, uh, cyborg arm to help if needed. No, I can carry myself, thank you. And, uh, Nidar, uh, stays back in the ship, uh, and, uh, he, oh, yeah, and he, the little <laughs> wave, um, and he, and he says, uh, uh, I have transferred the coordinates to your vessel. Best of luck. And it, it brings one hand up. The eye shines bright. The eye shines bright. The eye shines bright. Uh, you head into the uh, ship. Gangplank closes back up. Uh, the only place that Viz can actually fit on this vessel is in the main uh, sort of uh, uh, communal hangar area. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, similar to the Falcon, the ship has basically a big area that with, you know, that's for the a table and there's a, a, a refrigerator. It's for and hollow chests. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's all this kind of stuff and you basically take up the entire space. Okay. Like, you can't really be shamed. <laughs> the ship heads off towards the rogue planet. Uh, in a, you know, there's, it's only a few hours uh, of travel to get there. Uh, and you are doing it with like full stealth on, so no one's looking. Uh, however, you are passing by a Siren trench. So as you pass by that trench and you're sort of looking at this from the cockpit, what you can see are all of the gun banks across, just, you know, Siren cannons pointed 
<laughs> you know, far, far away at the other trench, which is not visible from here. It is out of visible range. It's, it's essentially a dark line in the sky that is the absence of stars. I don't know why I'm looking at another part of the room like I'm actually going to see what you're describing. I know, right? But I hey. just did that. Ah, I love it. Oh. Um, but as you but as you do, what you realize is like if one of those cannons decided to open fire, they could decapitate the brightest eye leadership right now. Uh, this is a this is a tense moment. I mean, our ship is intentionally fair on, on the outside, fairly nondescript. Exactly. I would imagine. True. Yes. And I don't know how our size, our relatively small size. You are flying totally under the radar. It's yeah. just more than if something were to go wrong. This looks real scary. That's it. I'm just sort of setting a tone. Um, if any of you have anything you want to talk to each other about, this is a great opportunity to do it while Colin is away, and then we can uh, hmm. we can kind of jump back into the plot. Uh, well, I'm going to need some help from Merza. Uh, I need to be presentable at this meeting. I don't need mean I need to look good. That's never going to happen again. But I need to be present. I, I need to hurt less. Always. Whatever you need, my queen. As much as I can handle. I, I don't want them to see me receive treatment while I'm there. Better to do it all now. Understood. Thank you. Takah's gonna go raid the cape closet to see if <laughs> she can just get a bunch of capes that we can throw over his to look as impressive as possible. Okay, sounds good. Um, can I get a pharmacology check from you? Yes. 32. Yes. You know. You are very good at being drugs. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like... I am first among my species at being drugs, Almost. which is a thing our species does, Almost. is being drugs. Almost. 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 I have some thoughts. Oh, I have so many thoughts, always. Quick heads up, guys. I'm having so much fucking fun. Yes! You know? Thank you so much for doing it this again. It is so good to be back. Oh, it's so nice. Yay. I miss this show a lot. It's so nice. Yay. All right. Thanks to everyone who's coming in. Yeah, this really. Way. Thank you guys for coming. I really. I, are, are you having fun? I know. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. I'm glad. You'll feel better soon. That that is definitely. You will a fact. feel two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 13 better soon. <laughs> All right. So 13 um, times better than I did a minute ago. Uh, okay, so for Viz. Do I need a bedside manner check on that, by the way? What was that? Do I need a bedside manner check on that? Sure. Okay. I'm fine with that. Cool. Well, it is not a heal, though. It's okay. just a buff check, so no. All right. Um, but the, but on the buff, what I'll give you. The goal here being basically that you don't display weakness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm not going to make this mechanical. What I'm going to do, just because we never stripped your character sheet okay. for the physical damage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say you're, um, it is, you're able to stand like upright and okay. walk upright. Basically, you are, you're walking on less limbs than a brightest eye should, but you are, you essentially do not feel pain right now. Right. So the, uh, it's funny, it's, it's, this is like when my bifida gets like really, really bad. It, Sometimes you have to like, sometimes you're, you're on these fucking muscle relaxants that'll just destroy any sense of like feeling. It's like, cool, like, I feel great. It's like, no, you don't. You just don't know that right, you, you don't feel, feel great, right? Nothing. Yeah. That's where you're at right now. Okay. Um, you step sort of up onto the um, up onto the piece and sort of straight up a lot straighter. As you do this, Taka comes into the room with like all four arms full of capes. <laughs> Who's touching my capes? I read it. It's Taka right at the cape closet. Oh, okay. To help cover up. Uh, and, oh, you see, and, and, and as you enter, you see that Viz actually looks much stronger. Um, there's a, it's, it's, a, it's an actual changed countenance uh, in Viz. You look much stronger. Thank you. Okay, well, if we're doing this, then I've got to roll a fashion design. Because, like, this is fine, but, like, we can judge this. <laughs> like, no, you judge? No. May I judge? Is there a judging? You may not. May I approach my queen and let you judge? It, it would assist with negotiations, the more impressive you look. I look like the specter of death. <laughs> we could perhaps make you not look like, like them. But imagine if you looked like you were dying but still looked fabulous. <laughs> the fact that you don't care that you're dying would be... that That's a thing, isn't it? I, I just want to... I want to 
run back. I'm gonna go run, run over to the where I've got a bunch of fabric hung on the walls. I'm gonna rip it down. It's all like dark. It's all like wood and dark greens. It's a lot of dark tones. I'm just gonna like carefully approach oh and, and then just start draping it. So it's not like a bunch of glittery. Oh, it's okay. Mirrors up. I know, but it's like black and dark. And if you want to look like the specter of death, goddamn right. Now you look like a fucking. Now you look like a monster. Right. Good idea. Can you make a pocket? Fashion for design check. <laughs> Twenty one. It has pockets. Fashion check. Fashion check. Fashion, fashion check. check. Fashion, fashion check. Fashion Yay. check. Yay! Our favorite tongue check. Yay! The <laughs> most useful of all the checks. It's weirdly <laughs> actually it's so useful. It's such a. One, it's it's two, a perfect. Three, four, it's an five, engineering six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, I feel 15, compelled 14. right now to say that these dice have never rolled this well for me. They don't throw, roll well for Toby either. <laughs> no, they rolled okay for me. You found, you, you found yes. the ones that love you, bro. Yeah. Let's get it. Um, all right, so that, that was a 15? 14. 14? Yeah. Okay, so not quite threshold, but that's fine. Because uh, that's still an outstanding success. So what we're going to do is give you a buff. Is cool. um, you now, and that's an intimidation buff. Great. Right. Four plus three intimidation. Yes. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Perfect. Okay, cool. Do you have anything for them? And then literally, it's as if the room like stops and everybody turns, and in the corner <laughs> is the new kid. <laughs> I'm standing there with armfuls of capes. Help yourself. I don't. Really? I don't think you need it. Oh. Thanks. But if you wish, it. you could help yourself. Like, last chance's face is like, has changed color. <laughs> Whatever color our blood is, that's the color of their faces right now. I, I think, I think I'm okay. I go head back to the Cape Closet. I Thank guess you. We're not using Thank any you. Uh, all right, awesome. So, because we're running out, you know, we're out of time schedule, yeah, I'm just gonna push us forward. So, uh, you guys are now headed, like, uh, as you uh, as you drop the rest of the capes back and you head towards the cockpit, um, good idea and last chance. You both head to the cockpit just to cover to put the, uh, the capes away. In the and, distance and, and get my guns and get your guns. In the distance, of course. I sort of assume you always actually. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I don't. Know. Uh, I mean, technically, you do. In the distance, at least four. Oh, uh, through the darkness, there uh, you can see essentially some shape. We were talking about the absence of light earlier in the uh, the trench. This is that, but much, much larger. So, you know, you're sort of, it's like, that looks like a lot of area without space or without stars. And it's like, no, that's no area without stars. Uh, so you, this thing uh, sort of floats, rotating in you know, this slow moving orb uh, that's kind of making its way towards you. It's the planet? This is the rogue planet. Uh, but with no, no light to hit it, obviously, it's harder for it to see. Um, I want to, just because I love this character and I want to get this moment, uh, I want to just have a moment between the two of you mm -hmm. in that uh, in that deal uh, where, like, so, like, good idea is, like, sitting in the cockpit chair and the other one is empty. Mm -hmm. Can I sit here? Of course. Last Chance sort of, like, slides into the seat and then, like, just sort of... You're the queen's new mouthpiece. Not exactly. Mm. I kind of got put on this mission sort of because there was nowhere else for me to go. And they are the type of people that take in the people who have nowhere else to go. Well, they do collect strays, but a tongue, I mean, tell me there's not other places for a tongue to be. We are relatively useful. Relatively is a word for it. In my case, maybe less so. I have actually never successfully negotiated anything. But <laughs> your genetic imperative is to successfully negotiate. I think something got broken. All I've ever wanted is to be, well, you. Ever since I heard about you and the things that you've done, you're well, there's a reason why my name is This Is Your Last Chance. It doesn't have anything to do with the people I've been talking to. It's what everyone always says to me. Well. 
I can't exactly tell you that you have great taste in role models. <laughs> well, like you said, it's all relative, isn't it? Everything in the stars is relative. They might have told you this is your last chance. Take it from someone who has faced their fair share of last chances. There is always another chance. Well, I'm still here, so I guess that's not necessarily untrue. But I figured this is a great chance to study at the elbow of an actual master. Let's all get out of this alive and see if we survive the day. And then I'd be happy to talk about how we could have improved things, perhaps. That sounds good. Uh, this is how tongue works out now. Yeah. That's... Wow. Thanks so much. You listen, and on a long enough timeline, we all make mistakes. I've made a few, and lately, some of my choices are not something I am entirely comfortable with. It gets harder and harder the longer you're alive. So I would appreciate it, tongue to tongue, if you listen with your ears, and don't be afraid to use that wonderful tool of yours. Because it's literally the best thing you possibly can do. It's what we're made for. Remember that. Speaking, that is our destiny. Well, I think I understand. But I'll definitely keep my ears open. Ears open, tongues out. That's how we work, <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh yeah. And the ship crests over the rogue planet, heading down. Uh, the planet is uh, still spinning as if it, uh, whatever star system it was in long ago, uh, ejected it outwards. And it's still spinning at a relatively uh, gravitational rate. So you sit, you get in, and you get, though there's no light source, no heat on this planet, no real atmosphere to speak of, there is gravity. As you get into geosynchronous orbit, uh, and Taka, you hit the uh, the other chair in the cockpit. And I do what I always do whenever we get to a planet, which is perception listen. Do it. Please do. Perception listen. Why we're not all dead. <laughs> I've, it's, it's not fly. <laughs> why everyone else is not dead. <laughs> Seven, eight, seven, six, five, six, seven. Awesome. Seven, sweet. Great. As you reach geosynchronous orbit uh, and you listen, you can hear uh, on the planet only one vibrational frequency. And that only like one thing that's really like penetrating space to you. Uh, it's echoed a little bit by the amount of death that this planet seems to have been found. When this planet, whatever caused this planet to uh, lose its star system, to end up out here in the nothing, uh, was, you know, millennia ago. And that death still soaks this place with a kind of eldritch undertone to your listening. It's as if there's a dull roar of screaming underneath the facts. But the facts are these. There's a prefabricated structure on the planet. It's been dropped here within the last 12 hours. As you come over it uh, and the ship reaches uh, the, fab the, the structure, what you can tell is that the structure is of Siren, uh, of na uh, Siren by nature. It too has uh, Siren capital strung a little bit on the side of it. Not nearly as gaudy as, as what you just saw with the brightest eye. It's literally just like a little bit on either side of it on the seals. Uh, Siren do this sometimes just to show you that they're rich, right? This it's one... Kind of piping sort of like? Yeah, 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 yeah like okay. gold piping, exactly. Uh, but the trick of it is that there's this... Uh, it's sort of a, a... It's like a little tent, essentially. Um, I'd say roughly the size of this room. Majestic you know? room. Yeah, it's a big... It's a big set room specifically for you guys to meet. Uh, it is, you rolled a seven? Yes. Eight. Okay. Yeah, 
That's what you see. This was a place of death a very long time ago. Uh, that Syrian structure has been here for perhaps 12 hours, and there is only one life form down there right now, but I did not get much on them. Who's our negotiating contact? Who are we here to meet? Um, do I know that? No. It is literally just the new Siren leadership. The Siren have not announced a new Mr. Siren since Gasco Ueno. Okay. It's been essentially a leaderless situation, um, which is normal for the Siren. Right. But uh, they have appointed a negotiator specifically for this uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. They are hiding somewhere. No one is so foolish as to meet the visionary destroyer without some kind of doesn't matter one way or another if they have an army or if they're alone. They'd all wind up dead. <laughs> but they all find it so comforting. They do. Maybe they're getting a little smarter. <laughs> or maybe we're walking into a trap. Sure. Have you made your peace? <laughs> of all of us, I think I'm the only one who's died already. This happens now and again. I'd prefer not to die in a place that will never see trees again, but I suppose we don't always get to choose. Let's plan on not dying, if at all possible. I said I did it once, I'm not interested in a second time. But... Third time. <laughs> I'm told that it's the charm. So, you have nothing if not how charm. Are you gonna, how are you gonna uh, approach this place? Uh, we're gonna bring down our ship. Is there a docking port? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got it's got an airlock okay. on the side of it. There's yeah. two on it actually. One is empty. The other one mm. is the one. I mean, they're both empty, but one is the one that you're going to, and the other one is empty. All right. Are we trying to scare them? No, we're here to negotiate. We're here for terms. I think we'll come in two tons in front, then Taka, then me, and there's it. That makes sense. What am I supposed to be to you, here? They have mind. a way they think of sweet relief. Well, let them think that the sweet relief have a leader. At some point before we uh, exit the ship, last chance we'll go to Dakar. I'm actually not too bad at those. Do you have any extra ones? Guns, I mean. Uh, I'm gonna... Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, assuming I still have all the guns I had three months ago. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the two Siren Scatter Pistols. All right, Siren Scatter Pistols over to Last Chance. And you see, you see uh, Last Chance kind of look at them, and then when they think no one is looking, kind of like flip them over their fingers and then stick them into a holster. And like pretty well, actually. Like it is. Okay, so I still hmm. have I still have my gun arm and my pop pop multi weapon, which okay. is what I tend to gunslinger with anyway. So. Yep. Awesome. Slick kid. All right. So you lock up, Ooh, airlock yeah. opens, door opens again to an axe. Yep. Uh, tongues out first. Tongues yep. out. <laughs> no, uh, tongue which down, one of you wants to handle the perception check? I haven't rolled yet. I'll I'm do not. It. I'm not gonna oh. have everybody roll. So okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, last chance. First first roll ever. Yay! Yay. Alright, your First perception. roll, last chance. <laughs> Eight. Not fast. And I uh, remind you, you have three willpower. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about willpower. Oh, I've willpower. been the... I've like a billion. Yeah, you, you have like, you have a metric score. Yeah. I think I'll try this one without oh, willpower a... and see how bad I screw myself. Yeah. yeah, no. Well, really? Hey. really? Hey. Uh, no, no, no. It's a three. It's a three. Yeah, it's a three. It's a minor. minor. Um, <clears throat> all right, here's what you get. You walk in and the walls are gray. Um, up above them in every direction, uh, you can see literally the inside of this place has uh, just like metal straight slate walls, right? Just metal brutalist. Wait, what? Not kind slate walls. walls. Okay. Just <gasps> like, <yeah>. Gotta <laughs> remember, I can't use that word. Um, going up into a point, basically a big triangular room uh, and circular in every way, almost like if you took a D10, and sliced it in half. Uh, you guys are now in the middle of that. Uh, in there is a table, small circular table, uh, standing 
at that table, I'm sorry, sitting at that table, is one individual. Young, very handsome, pale and gaunt. Uh, he is a homeworld sealer. He is in a intensely snappy suit. Uh, like a suit with lapels that then have another lapel and then a gold like capital lapel. Uh, he has a, uh, a little hat. Like, it's just like, it's a little square. Mini fez? Yeah, it's a mini, mini fez. fez. It's a little square Fezzy. on the top of his head that then has a little, another little square and another little square, like a little, little pyramid. Great. Uh, that lives in his head. <laughs> and uh, a, uh, a cravat. It's a cop perception listening to the thing on his head because she doesn't trust it. <laughs> I don't trust that hat. <laughs> I don't trust that hat. <laughs> sure, feel free. I'm sorry. Uh, Keep going. So you walk, um, you walk in, Breathe. and he he sits there at the table, covering half of his face like oh, Gendo fucking Akari. <laughs> Last chance. Why don't you do the honors? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Tongues, right? Yes. <laughs> Presenting Her Royal Highness, the Queen of the Brightest Eye, and the ruler of all things vast, Queen Visionary Destroyer. <laughs> and like she, uh, they really do like a tiny little fist pump and then sort of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Nice. It matches. Yes, there we go. Sweep the cape. All right. Um, we'll walk in. And I, I was in front of him. Yeah, right. Tall and unyielding. Um, is there a seat for me? Am I standing? What's there the is setup no, on the other there, side? There is the literally a, a seat for a Siren like body, Size like a normal person. like biped body yeah. seat. Is on the other side of the table. I, sw I swoop in, useless. grab the chair, and throw it away. Just like literally, just throw it. Yeah, get it that. clatters against the wall. Bang, 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 bang. My queen. The the uh, literally all the guy does is cut his eyes and then look back to you. But his eyes go straight to you, and he does. He, once he locks eyes with you, he does not stop. So I'll kind of curl myself up as much as I can to kind of not spread all the way out across this room <laughs> and sit directly across and slowly pull the hood back on the cape, showing, you know, this kind of shredded face. So you're the new Mr. Siren? And he takes one hand, he keeps his other hand in front of his mouth, takes one hand and he goes... And all of a sudden, the entire room lights up with video displays. I don't think I've been in a Saturn facility since I murdered a bunch of them on the ship I was on. The video displays pop up, and all of a sudden, just this like, like incredibly militaristic, like propaganda footage starts playing in 360 on all of the walls. Fighter jets and Siren flags and industry and people like hammering. There you go. There you go. Uh, for years, the Sirens have been taken advantage of by the rest of the galaxy. For years, the Brightest Eye have used their trade negotiations to try to keep us down. But now, now we have a leader who fights for the Siren people. That's right, you are now having the honor of speaking with Mr. Siren himself, Shotar Kiavin, leader and victor of the Siren people. And I just like, guy. and it's like, it's, it's just fucking like flashing and like, I, it's, it's on screen. Yeah, 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 I, sh yeah. I shoot, I shoot, I shoot there's a, a glance. Uh, so I'm gonna gunslinger the screens. Yeah, I, that's that's exactly it was what. Either that my chances. EMP. Those were the two. You are now in combat with his <laughs> propaganda <laughs> video. Yeah, well, like <laughs> last chance, you see their their. Uh, what, what's my okay? So uh, gun arm first and uh, pop uh, multi weapon second. Okay, so I don't your um, my, let's see your fat macros. Yes, my fat macros. <laughs> okay, golden uh, max. <laughs> so you want to use the, the what are you using first? The limb gun? Yeah, no, the gun arm. Right, right, right. Yes, gun arm. Um, yeah, the thing that blew up the tank. That time. 
Yeah, but I don't think I had the limb gun anymore. I think I, I gave that to someone because it was my worst weapon. 17. <laughs> so, so, so thankful for you. Hell yeah. Okay, this editing is And sharp. you see last chances, like demeanor completely change and the smile is gone and like everything goes stone cold. And they just draw one of their guns, like both of their guns and they like, well, one of them at least, and goes for one of the other screens. Like, they're not having any of this shit. Uh, eight. Eight? Yes. Okay. And I know it does 10 damage. It does. Uh, and this might be your first clue as to, as part of why maybe Last Chance doesn't have the best luck like with negotiation. <laughs> but also why we like having them around. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Uh, so that's the first shot, 18. And then what was the set? The uh, and like then you seven, wanted to shoot with the, what? The pop pop, so with weapon, the weapon and gun form. Uh, all right, that is... Oh, it's like, targeting like 7, 17. so it's 16, 17, 18, 19. Oh, 19. Okay. At some point, I would love to look for the weapons that are around here, or whatever automated bullshit they have going on. I'm being check. defensive. Yeah. Uh, can I add my engineering to that? Yeah, I'll allow it. Yeah. May I have my gun check, please? Hell yeah! Yeah, right. yeah we hate to. And then six, six <laughs> for the pack off. I have both of, of the searing ones, yeah. Um, 12. 12? Ooh, yep. nice. Uh, one more. One, two, three, four. Four? Four? Yeah. At least one. Wait, hold on. One, two, three, four. Yeah, you're, you're good at four. Yeah. Okay, so. He, say, he says he's near Kiavin! And you reach out with both pistols and just bam, bam. On both sides of uh, of this are the holographic emitters. Uh, they've sort of unfolded out of the wall, those slate, air, those slate gray areas just popping open and revealing these things. You fire at both of them and they both explode. So it, it, and, uh, there's four projectors, one, two, and then last chance taking a, a cue from you, pulls a gun and fires it as well at the, uh, at the far wall, exploding that one. 13. 13. Uh, what you catch as you swoop around uh, is that these things that have opened up to reveal these projectors also have are stacked with weapons. Mm -hmm. So each of these four pylons is essentially made of deployable guns. Uh, you've, but you take down these things and the video comes back on and the normal lights come back on. I, and I look, I look, I know I'm not the negotiator. He does not move. I so now that we have shown off our guns, may we discuss peace. And he cuts his eyes to, to you. <laughs> oh. I agree. We're here to talk. It was a nice commercial, though. <laughs> and he finally lowers his hands. And, uh... You can see that his face has some like scarring around the mouth from the neck. <laughs> uh, that uh, and like puncture marks all up and down the chin. Like, where are my pencils? Please, no, <laughs> no, just please. I would love to confirm. Yeah. That this is. Yeah. Is yeah. this scarring that we would we would we would know? This is long-term <laughs> sweet tooth <clears throat> use. Ah. And he looks at you. And I land on Viz and I start whispering into her ear everything I saw about the guns. How am I supposed to negotiate? with someone so clearly under the influence. Do you see me and my sweet relief here? Oh. You must be Meza Dolchet. <laughs> Let me play my favorite song. <laughs> um, your reputation precedes you. I wasn't aware any of you called us by names. 
I think perhaps it's time we speak plainly. I'm not here to negotiate with this monster. I'm here to negotiate with you. Far and wide, your people now speak your name, and that of the traitor Gasco Ueno, and that of the revolutionary firebrand Rekichal Moor. You are the reason for such a commercial. You are the reason I need to be here at all. They're the reason you're afraid. I don't much like being told I'm afraid. You didn't need to tell us, or you don't need to much like it at all. You just broadcast it on every screen. It was pretty obvious. Whoever you've hired for propaganda, I suggest you find someone with a little more aptitude. We'll leave our car. <laughs> he, he does very good work. He looks to you. You can feel Mersad shaking. This is an anxiety shaking, you can tell. Okay. You know perfectly well they don't talk to people a lot. You are the front man. The front point. <laughs> because you see, a certain amount of information has come into my possession. information on your governments, on your weaknesses, personality profiles, and interesting opportunities. I have designed this room to take advantage of each of them. I have designed this as a room that will negotiate with all of you for me. Unless you would like to do this in perhaps a more civilized way. One where you get everything you want. And one where I get exactly what I need. And what is that? Come, Relief. And the rest of your brothers and sisters are free. Uh, I would like to uh, throw the table clean across the room and get directly in his face. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'm not going to make you roll for that. You're a giant. Uh, you grab the table. You tell me, man. What happens? Yeah, I, How do you just do? one arm, just throw it and just slither like straight up, just drop way down to his level and just pull it and just full fucking fangs. You do not tell them what to do. Ever. <laughs> ah, ah, gentlemen, my queen, uh, let's... I fucking feed me, boy. Do you want peace, or do you want death? No, I want death. No, we, I no. will free every slave, every one, all of them across my space. I will flood your space with tiny bats, so happy to be free. All I require is one, one show of propaganda, as you put it. One commercial, one victory that I can take home to my people and let them know those bats that one day they'll be ours again. But I make you this deal. You let them go, and I make sure you have people. Information. Intimidation, 21. I'm going plus to got some put, to that. Uh, oh yeah, plus three for the yeah, for the buff. And so that's 24, I'm gonna put four willpower okay. at 28. My queen. My queen. And this entire time, Last Chance keeps trying to figure out, should I put my gun back? Should I keep 
it out. <laughs> and good idea is like, gu gun out. It's a gun out situation. Yeah, yeah, we're guns out right now. Admittedly, the rule is usually suns out, guns yes. out, and it's a rogue planet without a star. Nonetheless, yeah. guns out. Tongues out, guns out. <laughs> that I like. I got an 11. Yeah, it looks like they all. Yeah. Can you roll the 10, was it? <sighs> then tell me your terms. Sweet relief, go free. Your side of the trench stands down. We disarm as best we can. And trade continues. The brightest eye will offer you exclusive contracts for the next two years. We will buy only from you. I'm offering you species worth of capital exclusively. And you see him take a moment. He just sort of looks off in the distance. Negotiation check. Mm. I want to add something to that. Yes. Um, I just look at the Siren and go, even if you could get Merza, all you would ever, ever have is a little bit more resistance. Uh, a long time ago, I rolled a perception check uh, or a perception listen on his hat and he had an eight. Did I get anything from that no, hat? No, it's just a hat. It's just a hat. It's just an ugly hat. Yeah, it's a it's cod this time, Tim. I like that. Um, I <laughs> <laughs> Like in the midst of a serious negotiation. I like she your She thinks she's hat. not helping. helping. <laughs> That's not helping. Um, I have a brightest eye social convince. I don't actually have a negotiation. Here's a fucking surprise I've never no. negotiated. No, it's right there. It's just labeled hand to hand. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, last chance um, to sort of tuck themselves up as close to like just off Mares's flank the as situation. possible. Yeah. yeah. It's called intimidating roar, bull rush, uh, <laughs> yeah. oh. the bevy of good martial arts moves. You see, I'm a kind of a, as, as an aside, it's like you see now perhaps why the species of giant cockroach monsters have spread far and wide with only war at their Rick at beck and call. They don't let the talkers do the talking. Uh, that the only is reason eight. I'm any good at these. I have eight left, um, and I'm gonna oh, use five of five. it. So yeah. it's a ten, so it's fifteen. You said. Da, 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 da. Yeah, cha, cha, cha. Five. Okay, that's against a nine. Ten years, and we keep half. Of our sweet relief. <laughs> I think that's a no. Ten years. The contract is final. All sweet relief go free. Immediately. Mayor Zadolchet's name will spread far and wide. You will never ever be able to keep the sweet relief under control. Mezzatone Chet's name could travel far and wide. In such videos, shown in cages. Mezzatone Chet speaks for himself. And I'm not very photogenic. Very well. Ten years. Our sweet relief. But you stay here as a hostage to assure compliance. Done. Done. Before you, can I just a quick question? What about the other slave races that you keep under your boot? They are material to this discussion, as I know. 
won my queen. All of this, 10 years, financial shackles of your people, of your empire, to free one? There are millions. What would it cost? To eliminate slavery from the entire Syrian. What would it cost? You want me dead? You want a 20-year contract? You want a lifetime contract? What does it cost? I'm gonna shoot you a very upset look. <laughs> the concordance. Dominion over your people. That isn't eliminating slavery. Not slavery, simply a state. A member of our great ventures. One to trade with us, be treated as equals, but under the leadership of a certain Mr. Zirin. Who would of course be allowed at my right hand, be given all manner of comforts for your degenerating visage. But I will trade you our slaves for the eye. You, of all people, know how vassals are treated. And if I give them one vassal species, but three hundreds of species? But you wouldn't just be giving them one. It's a cup. Perception this in case. You'd be giving uh, them a regular one or is it a lie detect? Uh, yes, it's a lie detect. Uh, so that's like 35 or something? I love you. You're like, you're like is it the 18 or is it the one that I know is better? <laughs> 30. It's a 30. 30? Yeah. I was close. Four? Uh, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Shit, yeah. As he's leaning in and everybody's been so, like, they're in this negotiation. It's almost like everybody's forgotten that the room is fucking loaded with weapons. Well, we didn't even know that. I know. Yeah. <clears throat> what okay. you hear uh, behind you is the most mighty, was it 19? 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get it before it even pulls. The most microscopic of unfoldings along the back wall. Uh, a, uh, a gun platform inside me targeting down on Visionary Destroy. Uh, uh, targeting right at the weak spot at which her concordance is displayed. Can, can, can I put on and shoot the damn thing? If you want I mean, to. I already have the weapons out, so I don't even... Yeah, I'm gonna shoot it. Is it like a giant gun platform? It's a, like, it's a big gun. I'm gun. shooting with the uh, the Paca multi weapon because it's more it's better targeting. Hey, do it. Do you need the number or you do it? Uh, I mean, I guess I, uh, it, it's just one platform that's mm -hmm. opening up. Actually, I'll gunslinger so because I would just keep shooting at it until it's not there anymore. Okay. Uh, so I'll start with the Paca 19. The 19. Let me get two. Don't need to roll in a shift. I'll go ahead and finish what I was going to say there. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Um, but you wouldn't just be giving them one. We all just got out from. 12 for the first. Speaking with as much respect as possible, we all just get out from underneath your foot. You give them you. You're giving them us. We still belong to the brightest eye. And I'm speaking for myself and maybe for everyone else. I won't do it again. Nor should you. You don't belong to me anymore. You belong to yourself. I may not belong to you, but you're the... You gave me another chance. And I'm not going to waste it. And I certainly won't stand here and let you sell me. Because I stand at your side. 
you took us out of the box, my queen. Don't put us back in it. I hop down from Visionary Destroyer. I'll wait to see what Jakar does. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you so you hop down, the platform is opening, and you just shoot the platform? Yeah, I got okay. I got 12 for the Paka, multi-weapon, gun form, and 5 for gun arm. Fuck all. <laughs> Alright. Um, so you pop up and fire it at this thing. Uh, that's... Yeah. Uh, and it... Like explodes outward, suddenly making sort of turning the whole room, and like everybody turns back to the thing suddenly uh, to see Taka having pulled guns on both sides of the platform. Uh, the guy, he stands up. What is this? An assassination attempt. Or you are. Uh, 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 good point. Uh, <laughs> You come into these negotiations in good faith. I protect myself from a clearly superior physical foe. And then this one opens fire in our negotiations. I will take my sweet relief and I will leave. Thank you very much. The platform was opening. Yes. Cute. Your fear is showing. And you can tell he's starting to get really, like, he's getting really freaked out. Like, he knows suddenly how quickly this could turn into violence, and he knows how quickly, he knows he almost just won. So he's starting to, like, he, he literally is up, he is starting to back out of the room, and he keeps gesturing from there. Come, come with me, Relief. Uh, uh yeah, just... Free my people, and I will come to you. This is your last chance. <laughs> And he, he, he reaches up to a tab, pulls a pen, a little like stylus, it, like literally like unfurls in his hand. And he, uh, he looks at you. Agreed? No war between our peoples. You would have done it? Yes. Because I have to read. Because I have to. And I do too. You are not the only one who rules a species here. And who takes leadership for the sweet relief when you're gone? Who They shows... do. We rule ourselves. And what happens to you? My queen? Who does this remind you of? With his lapels, and his fancy hat, and his smile for days. <laughs> Who would you trust? Of anyone here? Someone who looks like that? Or someone who looks like this? That is a liar. That is all I will have to say about that. Worm tongue check. Resolve check. Your resolve is... Mm, okay. 20. Yes. Your worm tongue is 35. Hell yes. yes. And just, I mean, just serious are usually cute. Because vast is deeply unbalanced. Yay. <laughs> I mean, question though, oh, did... Oh, are Neil's <laughs> chairs fun, <laughs> Jackson? <laughs> Jack, question though, are Siren no keeping to their contracts, though? Oh, yeah. I mean, so if he's arguing against known facts, is that a bonus for Viz at all? Uh, no. <laughs> no? Okay. Uh, because it's also, it's just as... Uh, I think ultimately, it's a little bit less of an actual factoid uh, negotiation. He's... The real problem here is that she does not want to let Mares in. This is an emotional yeah. decision, yeah, not yeah, a logical yeah. one. Well, mm -hmm. All good ideas trying to do is tip the scale. Of the Nine for result. Seventeen. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> uh, so good ideas weren't swayed pretty effectively here. 
you've been really fighting the idea of reacting emotionally to this because you know how much is on the line, but your very best friend in the world mm -hmm. is about to step into a cage forever and no amount of abstract other lines matters to you as much as that right now. Um, between that, Last Chance's uh, plea to not be, uh, uh, as they put it, sold again, and uh, good ideas, uh, warm tongue, essentially, uh, you, are, you are now looking at this guy a lot less like um, a negotiating presence and a lot more like something to eat. Lucy Bard asked me to come here and talk to you. So I came and we talked. I'm done talking. Did That's we have a deal? Well, I've made my decision. Uh, and I would like to... Eat his face! <laughs> Already! <laughs> Big episode of Bast. Without, Without a jaw. Face. Rest of the willpower. Uh, put, it right. put it in. 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 So, John Rip, you will first. brawl. She this is an outstanding face. success. She's you can bite off a part of his body. Uh, right. So, brawl check. Your brawl check is a 20. Uh, I'm going to put the last of my willpower in, which is four. Nice. Nope. Yeah. What do you got? Eight. Okay. So, it's damage, but not a rest. Oh, uh, yeah. Or in vast um, ties go to defenders. 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 So no in? damage. Got it. Yeah. Um, um, so one you, thing I would like to do, though, yes. even if there's no damage. Yes. I, this is something I've never used. Okay. Venom. Yeah. Oh, hey. oh. Okay. Yeah, you finally used it. <laughs> You're the We've one had this installing <laughs> a diva. We actually had this entire I conversation know. on Support. the best cast. Um, oh, yeah, right. Never, never used it. Yeah. Uh, so. I'm going to make you re-roll the brawl check okay. uh, to see if you can infect with Venom. And I'm going to plus it a little bit on defense because you lost good people. But I like that idea, so we're going to break the rules a little bit. Yeah. 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 Where the yep. rules are made up. Yep. One, two, three. It's almost like it was invented. But, oh, but the points really are bad. real. Okay. So okay. Beat Nate. Okay. No, I didn't. Uh, I have a five. Okay. Really cool idea, but... I'd like to roll into initiative then. I, we will. Yeah, cool. So you... Jaw rip out, literally like you land, he, he, his hands land on your face as the jaw, it's like the, you know, it's like a fucking T-Rex and human, right? He's just trying to not get consumed. And he, he does this and then you, you feel like a, like a shockwave back from you mm -hmm. as a personal shield engages around him, um, seemingly projected from this building. So as this happens, he throws you backwards, and this flies across oh, the room, shit. landing oh, on the other side of the room like this big thing with a huge amount of force. Wabush! And lands. And you are now in combat with this room and Sontar. Uh, your initiative is six. Minus twelve. Your Minus initiative is twelve. Eight. And we six. count what? Just successes? Just yes. successes. All right, and I've got not two. Count and then I don't count. Yes, I have one. Okay. One success. Uh, okay. I have three. Three. Baby Kong has I one I didn't success. Hey, so it's going close. to be such good narrative if I get to oh. kill him. Um, but I can't because that's just not my build and not my play in this room. Oh my god. And I know that. Why I didn't I do jumping smash? Yeah, buddy. Because you face rip. I mean, yeah, no. That's it's always been the jaw rip is not as mechanically strong for you, but it's so much more fun. It's so kill, and you were specifically looking at him in real. Oh, Vigilant Jumping Motivator Smash is an insta kill. So, That's not the point. Takah, you got eight? Yes. Uh, last chance. I got one. Good idea. Three. Yeah. Mercy. Three. Uh, you guys reroll? And I also you. got a three. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, three three. reroll. Three, three again. again. Five. Right. Uh, seven. Uh, four. Okay, so then Mirza, then Viz, then. I'll see, and on top of what good idea is... She doesn't. Okay, got it. Here we go. So, the, uh... Taka, you get first attack. Uh... Um, what, what is, what the room, what has happened now is each of these slots has opened up with its own weapon. Uh, one weapon is, uh, what looks like a sort of sonic cannon. Uh, one 
weapon uh, from behind over here is a whole series of uh, like it's like it's like a Gatling gun filled with uh, like flechette bullets, uh, and then obviously there is Mr. Siren himself now standing on the opposite side of the room, uh, drawing a sort of a gun that is materializing in his hand. Am I familiar with this kind of shielding that he has? No, this is you've never seen this technology before. I have a, I have a gun that blew away a tank. Yeah. Is it reasonable to assume that might get through the shield? Yes. Okay. The shield is not impenetrable. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna gunslinger him then because okay. I yes. don't know what's pointing it to, and he just threw this. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna start with a uh, gun arm. Okay. Uh, and, and just say he needs to die. Gun arm. Arm. Oh, really? How exciting! I think I broke the arm AI. <laughs> yep. The, the arm AI has spent three months with you and has kind of stopped being mortal. Was it 17 for the gun right. arm? Okay. You're a real girl. I love you guys very much. I mean, look, on a scale oh, of one damn. to Raska, you are not the most garbage ship That yes. uh, beat a one. That's nine. The shield rips apart. Uh, that essentially like takes the shield down for the entire rest of this turn. Okay, and I still have my other gun to shoot him with. Go for it. Uh, <laughs> uh, three, four, five, six. The, uh, the shield goes down and then the second gun uh, hits him in the chest. Kind of burns away, um, but you can see that uh, when it does, his suit is made of like metal. It's like an arm. Um, so when the suit burns away, you can see that it's actually layered. Each of those lapels is a different layer of armor. Uh, and you've only burned away on so much of it. Uh, he still has some uh, health left. Uh, but he sort of staggers backwards as he pulls his gun. Uh, then the flechette cannon above him points down at you and fires. Roll defense. Five, six, seven. Eight. Okay, one success. Okay, so it's a hit. Uh, the flesh Hold on, I get to roll this thing now. Okay, Flick Shet Cannon hits you four times for four damage. Total? Uh, total? What was that? To four damage total? No, it's four times for four damage. 16. So it's compounded. 16 damage. Okay, what's, what's um, my... Uh, the, your my... armor is nine, so that mitigates it. Uh, I'm going to soak five of that with willpower. Soaking five with willpower, taking two damage. Done. Cool. Okay, um, so the Flick Shet Cannon is really specifically seems to be designed to, uh, to um, avoid your ability to actually, like, climb your way out of this thing so as you sort of flip out of the way this thing hits you with these like it, it shreds the room with these little tiny pieces of metal that just embed all over you uh and kind of cut one side of your face a little bit like slice uh as you do okay next up is uh mr siri who uh turns pulls his gun and fires on you so roll defense. Your defense max is... Continue doing murders? Uh, I believe eight. it's eight. Yep. Yeah. Roll defense. My queen. I can't. Not again. Not again. Beat a two. Four. He misses. <laughs> uh, he, uh, he fires uh, with this thing, and it's like the guns that you saw earlier. And what it fires is this, like, beefy fucking plasma shot uh, that... You get out of the way of it, but it like uh, it hits like a, you know not, not for any damage, but it like sort of passes against the side of your and it literally burns the carapace. Um, like it's like designed as an anti bright style. Uh, okay, next up, good idea. All right, I pulled the chatterbox. Okay. Um, for, for, for people who maybe don't remember, what does the chatterbox do? The chatterbox has a pre-recorded message into it that lets me basically worm tongue at range. Uh, the message that's in it is, it'll go better for you if you let us go. Okay. Uh, roll your targeting. That is a uh, firearm check for 15. Oh, you're not the only tongue that can use a gun. <laughs> Come, 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 come. What you gonna do? <laughs> when they talk, talk to you. you. Yeah! <laughs> Six. Uh, yeah, he hit a one, so oh. yeah. you hit. Great. Uh, okay, roll your one gun. Uh, the speech characteristic for, the, for that is uh, 12. 12, so roll a 12. 
I just think the 35. That no. was his, yeah. wasn't that historical from the last time that he input time for a conversation back right, in uh, the end of Crime God? Right, no, you're right. Philosophy. You have to roll your worm tongue to determine the damage on the thing. Okay. Thank you. That he has to save. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's 20. Thank you. I'd forgotten how the chatterbox was designed. You're completely correct. Was, was 23 is my word? No, I just remembered the number 12. Lockbox. <laughs> 35, and then the number of successes that you get becomes the threshold by which I have to roll a resolve check. If my resolve oh, check does not yeah. meet the yep. metric, then I am now convinced. Yeah. Oh, hi, hi. How convenient. It's all the dice that I have over here. <laughs> yes. Three. Uh, 11, 12, 13. Oh, 14, 12. Nine. Oh, oh. Big fail, big fail, big fail, big fail. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Minus, Minus the two. Oh, right. Nine, eight. Okay. You, it, it hits him. Whoa, 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 whoa. And you see him go. And he, like, it like hits his head and he like, it fucking just fucks with his brain. And he, looks up and he goes, it might be better if I let you go. I'll burn you in space. I right, lost the accent. I'll burn you in space. There you go. I'll burn you in space. And he like fucking like runs back into his airlock and the airlock rocks around him. And as this thing starts to, um, this thing starts to like- We're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going. We, must, of, uh, we need to go now. Pulsing. You start to run? What do you do? I'm gonna concordance. Okay. Tell them to fire. Fire. Not oh. on us. No, the whole oh, fucking this. trench. Oh, oh, okay. Oh. Go, 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 we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going. Yeah, and, uh, and, and, and you the hear line. across the concordance just, yes, my queen. Oh, crap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> as you run into the ship and you get into your cockpit, what you see is a sky lit with fire. Uh, there are literally from that that like small slice that you couldn't see across the very long ways suddenly is bright red and it's firing outwards exactly towards you. It's getting brighter and brighter and brighter as the ship uh, burns away uh, from the rogue planet. A good idea in Taka just in the like cockpit seat. Uh, last chance holding on to the chairs behind and the uh, vessel essentially banks through fire uh, as it does. Uh, just for my sake, can one of you, uh, either Taka or Good Idea, whoever would rather do it, is gonna roll for piloting. Uh, what, what what are each of our piloting uh, checks? Because I don't uh, remember. Who's uh, it's a dex base. Yeah, it's a dex base. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, I think I'll do it. You got it. Uh, don't, don't do a normal roll. Two. Do you have any willpower left? Uh, oh yes, I have uh, four willpower left. You have. Oh, I will inspire. <laughs> okay, I will inspire the shit out of you dump, right I'm now. Dump that yeah? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pull up. Okay, Biz. How do you inspire? Um, well, I'm gonna poke <laughs> my head in the cockpit for a second. Your head's essentially in the cockpit. Right? Yeah. I don't know if you remember this, but when I was younger, we met on farm. Board. I didn't think you knew. You're the entire reason. I am who I am. Let us live today, and I promise to pay that back. Yes, my queen. Roll 12. Uh, well, no, did that yeah, refill yeah, all my yeah. willpower? Yeah, that refills your willpower. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna add the nine to it, so it's nice. a 21. Nice. First piloting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six. Hey, all right, that's not a fail. I um, probably needed that. The that ship, speech. the ship takes damage as it passes between uh, blast of fire, burn cannons, fucking like shredding chitin and technology off this thing. Your the, the loudest voice is uh, you know essentially battle scarred by this thing as it pops between, but as it races closer and closer and closer to the brightest side trench, it actually becomes easier and easier to maneuver around the fire. Uh, you find you end up skidding to see the guns and you make your way closer and finally skid to a halt on the other side of the trench, popping up among it as you see the brightest eye all around you deploying for war. And that is where we end. I have, I have one line to say. I know you have a line to say. What do you got? They're burning now. And with that, we end 
this episode of Vast. Thank you so much. We got the Yes, thank you all for watching. Thank you so much. You're all amazing. We appreciate everything. We will be back. That is a promise to you. Goodbye, folks. Oh, wait, I'm Jackson Lansing, and I'll see you in the future. Bye, guys. Okay. Okay, we're early. Shit. It's the only in the history of. <laughs> this is the first time a Vast game has ever ended early. Record this. Oh uh, no, once. Uh, in the one game with oh, Colin. Shit. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to. Um, one game with Colin. Yeah, the solo oh, game. Oh yes. That ended early. <laughs> I am a Vast back.